Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! There's sacking a man and then there's dismantling his entire decade's work. And right now, it's not entirely clear which path Theresa May will choose. But the signs over the past couple of weeks suggest she was no fan of George Osborne or his policies in government. The Prime Minister has launched an industrial strategy, which some are reading as a reversal of many of her former colleagues' priorities. Her instant rejection of the austerity project, her calculated pause over Hinkley Point, a reconfiguration of the northern powerhouse to include all UK cities. Osborne is rumoured to have once said he was prepared to be the most unpopular man in Britain to get things done. For a while, every tweet he sent out seemed to confirm that ambition, at least, was being met. But what if his legacy is now being used by the new PM to take economic policy in a whole new direction, even resetting the relationship with China? Here's Nick Watt. In office, he heralded the March of the Makers, but the one-time maker-in-chief is now a mere bystander as his legacy is unceremoniously marched off stage. Do we still trust the Chinese to invest? Today marked the moment when Theresa May moved on from Osbonomics as she summoned ministers for the first meeting of a new cabinet committee that will set her government's overall approach on the economy. Afternoon, Minister. That rather 1970s notion of an industrial strategy is back, and relations with China have taken a bit of a hit after a review was announced into the Hinkley Sea nuclear power plant. Downing Street insists that the delay in Hinkley Point is designed simply to allow the new Prime Minister to study the details of such a mammoth project. But Newsnight understands that Theresa May intends, at the very least, to oversee a modest resetting of Britain's relations with Beijing. Officials speak of a tonal change in which there will be no more talk of a golden era in which, as George Osborne used to say, Britain would act as China's best partner in the West. I don't think that uh, Theresa May and Philip Hammond come from quite the same angle that George Osborne did on this. May, obviously, coming from a home office angle, may have a little bit more concerns about some of the human rights types of questions associated with China. And uh, I think that um, George Osborne saw China, China's ambition to get into the European Union via the UK as an important part of his own strategy. That obviously isn't going to happen now in the same way, so I think that there's uh, some rethink about what, what the nature of the engagement with China is. But former ministers have told Newsnight they are surprised that the new Prime Minister is willing to risk Britain's reputation as a stable investment destination by such an abrupt move on Hinkley Point. I certainly don't think we should be grovelling. I mean, we shouldn't be kowtowing. We should be, treat the Chinese with respect and expect them to do the same here, which is broadly what has happened so far. So, uh, I mean, if we're resetting China downwards uh, and we're resetting Europe downwards and we're faced with the possibility of Mr. Trump in the United States, I mean, who are we going to reset upwards? This is a question, I think, probably worrying quite a lot of people. Theresa May believes that one of the key challenges for Britain outside the EU lies in rebalancing the economy and improving productivity by reviving two words rarely heard since the days of the coalition, industrial strategy. It's very welcome that Theresa May is reviving industrial strategy. It's something we did in the coalition. Uh, it was very uh, popular with the, the business community, particularly people in, in manufacturing, also creative industries. Uh, it, it gives long-term confidence to our, our industries here, and it's a way by which government and business can work together. Uh, uh, I, I was very sad that it, it fell into decline when the Tories took power, but if Mrs May wants to revive it, that's very, very welcome. George Osborne's pet project, creating a northern powerhouse, has been reconfigured as the new Cabinet Committee made clear it aims to boost all parts of the country. 
there is some anxiety in the north of England as to whether the new Prime Minister is quite as committed to it as George Osborne was. He had a northern seat and it was one of the uh, themes he had. Uh, and we'll, we'll soon see how sincere they are. Members of the Ancien Regime are bruised by the speed of change. But there's a crumb of comfort. One of the main brains behind George Osborne's northern powerhouse has been given a seat in the heart of Downing Street, drawing up the government's new industrial strategy. Nick Watt there. Well, revisionism may put a very different spin onto Osbornomics, the one we currently have, and the long-term legacy of his work won't be fully understood for decades. But how will the reset button, if that's what it is, affect what has gone before? Here to discuss are two critics from two different perspectives, Anne Pettifor, economist, a member of Labour's Economic Advisory Committee, and Dia Chakravorty from the Taxpayers' Alliance. And it's lovely to have you both here. And we should start really by saying that actually when you look at the Osborne legacy in terms of employment, employment numbers, in terms of business creation, in terms of the pension liberalisation. He, some of his achievements were truly remarkable, Anne. Well, I mean, really, I mean, the longest and weakest recovery in history. Uh, do you want to look at public debt, which continues to rise, despite, you know, massive fiscal consolidation, started off going to be for five years, but be turned into he ten years. He matched essentially Alistair Darling's plan. Mm -hmm. He just had bigger ambitions. Is that a crime? Well, what's happened is that debt continues to rise and the economy hasn't recovered, despite a fire sale of public assets, actually. So, so there's that. There's low wages. There's low productivity, about which he has done very little. He did very little. There's the fact that wage is so low, and he has responded to that, did respond to that with a minimum wage, but a little bit too late, too little too late. Uh, what else is there? I mean, low investment. And what's really interesting is that he, at the beginning of his um, uh, uh, role as, as Chancellor, he, he delivered a lecture, the Mice Lecture, in which he talked about imbalances in the economy, global imbalances, mm. too much high levels of private debt, but then he never talked about that again. And, dear, would you choose any of those points as criticisms of Osborne? Would you say it was wrong of him to go after cutting the deficit? Would it, was it wrong to go after austerity, presumably? No, but, but one thing that, that Anne points out is absolutely true. The national debt did balloon from 1.1 uh, trillion to 1.6 trillion. That's a very valid criticism. So um, that was his doing, or it was his failure to it manage was his, expectations? It was his failure to do enough to bring that down. But to be fair to him, I mean, I have spent most of my career attacking uh, George Osborne's policies, but his legacy is very much a mixed bag for me. There are some good things, there are some bad things, there are some OK things. So if you look at the good side of it, um, uh, I mean, he, he did inherit uh, an ailing economy, which he never tired of, of reminding us uh, about. Uh, but he did, he did inherit that, and he did bring uh, deficit down from 10% of GDP to 4% of GDP. I mean, what would you say about the, that, the minimum wage being raised to over nine pounds or the number very, very of jobs late in the day when he realized that 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 low real low wages which were still below the levels they were prior to the crisis 10 years ago were actually harming the economy and he, be, he woke up to that very late in the day and even then he's done very little about it so for example today there are cleaners in HMRC going on strike because although they've been granted this new minimum wage of nine pounds they're gonna be told All right, to work well, fewer look, hours. Let's look at where we are now. Mm. Theresa May talking in very explicit terms about an industrial strategy not a phrase that we've heard for you know 20 years or whatever mm. Is that the right way to go then, to forget the Northern Powerhouse, to say it's all about every city? Is that deliverable? Well, the, the Northern Powerhouse always sounded a bit gimmicky to me. Um, it seemed like a desperate attempt to hold on to some, something that, that was, you know, we needed a powerhouse everywhere across the country. You know, this Northern Powerhouse didn't make much sense to me. But one thing I would say that, uh, that, that I, I would like to see is scrapping of vanity projects like, like HS2, which is a massively expensive project which is now about to hit about 90 billion by our own uh, research, and re focus those on infrastructure uh, uh, policies which are actually going to benefit people um, because this is a pernicious project that's actually bankrupting the, the, trans, uh, the, the transport infrastructure budget as a whole. So things like that are really important and now is a good opportunity. What, really the, important the, what? That, that you shouldn't follow these? Yes, the so, so, these? exactly. So take the opportunity as a new administration to really review but some of these vanity projects. 
and millions of pounds, millions of hours of work in, in constantly recalibrating what might have been a good idea but for you to But think about it this way. If it isn't a good idea and you still see it through, you've ended up wasting more money in the but long run. You've got to be say, smart about these things. Can I just say this? You know, the trouble with the whole idea of an industrial strategy is that it needs financing. And unless we address the issues related to the City of London and the fact that the City of London does not act, if you like, as servant to the economy, but as master of the economy. And he did little about that. He allowed the City of London to carry on as before the crisis. And, 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 and so what has happened since well, the crisis is that banks have not lent into the real economy. So do People you think this is where in the industrial Theresa May is going to make a difference? Or is she going to have her first row with the city? Do you think she will take them on? I doubt it. That's why I don't think an industrial strategy will work. Well, because where does your, can I just ask you, where does your economic policy committee stand at the moment? Does that still exist? That does still exist. It's suspended its activities are suspended until after the leadership election. Suspended until yeah. September? Yeah, we're waiting for the, the leadership election. So do you feel, when you listen to Theresa May now, that she is on Labour territory, she is speaking your language, or do, or do you immediately want to push back on no, what you No, definitely, there is, definitely, she is trying to switch the, the Tory party away from this kind of elitism which existed under Cameron. Uh, and well, she's, she's been quite ruthless, hasn't she? It's been some, you know, some really bold moves, and I'd expect her, to, in, in terms of removing some of the um, uh, you know, old personalities, some of the old ideologies, and perhaps. China? Um, and China? I mean, and if she is resetting or modifying that really tone... It would really interesting to see what tone she sets with China when it comes to Hinkley. What do you say, interesting? We should um, be doing more kowtowing, less kowtowing? Well, no, it, it has to be a balance, surely. It can't, it can't entirely be this or that. It has to be different. Diplomacy. It has, has to be solid diplomacy, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested and I'm excited because I think she has shown a lot of grit, and I think that's what she needs to continue to show. We're out of time. Thank you both very much Thanks indeed. Thanks for coming in.